Here lately, more than any other thing I've been asked, I've gotten this question. Which Chromebook should I get for my kid? And whether I'm at the coffee shop or I'm here in the office, via email and comment threads, over and over I've had to answer this question. And so we wanted to pause everything else we're doing, all the other videos we're working on right now, and answer this question for you guys. Which device should you buy for your kids? And we wanted to kind of break it down into multiple categories and talk about which Chromebooks win in those categories. And then at the end, kind of wrap up and say, here's the one or two that we think that you should buy in this price category. And that price category that we're setting is $300 or less. And so the difficulty that arises in this question is based around the fact that in this end of the Chromebook sector, prices are pretty volatile. And so any given month, uh, a Chromebook can be a little more expensive or quite a bit less expensive, just kind of depending on when you're shopping. So we don't want to talk about all the specifics and exactly what price and exactly what processor and all that kind of stuff. We're going to make some general assumptions across the board here and make some assumptions that in general, these devices are all sub $300 and some of them are way sub $300 and then kind of make some recommendations across the board. But before we move into all of that, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. And as we're talking about Chromebooks for kids, privacy is an important issue. And whether your child is using this device at home or on the go, you wanna make sure that all of their browsing and all of their activity is kept private and kept to them. And so NordVPN has you covered in that way. All you've gotta do is go over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to check it out and get started today. So one thing is constant across pretty much all these devices and that's performance and where they slot themselves in just the entire Chrome OS ecosystem. There's a lot of stuff that's similar across the board here and whether we're talking about the Apollo Lake processors, which some of these have, or the MediaTek processors that a couple of other of them have, performance is pretty similar across the board. Most of them have four gigs of RAM. Most of them have 32 gigs of internal storage. So we're not gonna sit and harp on all those specifics as we move across these and talk about their prices and their pros and cons. And the four categories we're gonna talk about are durability, the screen, input methods like keyboard and trackpad, and then last but not least, price. And then as we kind of look through all four of those things, we'll kind of make a decision on which one we think is the best buy at this particular point. So up first is durability. There's only a couple of Chromebooks we can mention here because in general, the durable Chromebooks, the ones that are rated against drops and spills are saved for resellers to the education market. And so it's hard for general consumers to go and get those. But there are a couple we wanna mention. One is from Lenovo, the 500E Chromebook, and you're gonna hear that one quite a bit. And the second one is the NL7T from CTL. And if you've never heard of them, don't worry about that. They are uh, a reputable company that makes Chromebooks just for education, but you can go straight to CTL and get that one. And they're both rugged. They're both made to resist all kinds of drops and spills and stuff. So if you're really just looking for a rugged Chromebook, these are both right around 300 bucks. These two will fit the bill. Next up, let's talk about screens. There are a lot of bad screens on low end Chromebooks. That's just a given. However, there are a handful that are actually reasonable to use. But one note I wanna make, my daughter uses a Chromebook every day at school. She's eight years old. Never once has she come home and complained to me about the quality of her screen. So in general, I don't think kids are nearly as bothered by the quality of the screen as adults are. Your mileage may vary with your child, but as, as important as this is, I don't think this is an absolute deal breaker. However, that being said, we have three Chromebooks I wanna mention, technically four, in this segment that have decent screens at that sub $300 price. First up is the 14 inch Chromebook from Point2. If you've never heard of them, it's okay. They're a small company. We're just now starting to see uh, this Chromebook come up for order and it's aluminum with an IPS display at full HD, which is really, really rare in this price bracket, but it's right around 300 bucks. You have the Asus, 423 and 523 uh, respectively that are basically both the same Chromebook, just uh, one's 14 inch and one's 15 inch. Low resolution, poor viewing angles, but I wanted to throw them in here because they are two of the larger screens at a much lower price than you see. Most most of these smaller ones, uh, lower price Chromebooks are 11, 0.6 inch devices. And so that's a, a larger screen option if you would like it. And then lastly, I want to mention the Lenovo C330, which you're going to hear quite a bit. It has a good IPS uh, display with good viewing angles. It's 11.6 inches, uh, it's standard HD. 
but it's in this price bracket one of the better screens you can get. Next up we're talking input methods, so keyboards and trackpads and stylus if it's available and there's only one that has one in this price bracket and that is the Lenovo 500e. I told you we'd come back to it. It has a good display. I didn't mention it with the other displays, but it's got a decent display, but it, Lenovo makes great keyboards and, and serviceable trackpads. And so the input methods on this one are pretty good. And it comes with a garage stylus that fits right in the device. So if you got a kid that likes to draw or is thinking about drawing or likes to color and do all that kind of stuff, having that stylus is a pretty important thing. The runner up here would be the C330. Again, I said that we would mention it too. It has that kind of Lenovo input DNA going on there. They're, they're not the best keyboards and not the best trackpads ever, but they're very, very serviceable. And on these lower end Chromebooks, that's an important thing to note because some of these input methods and trackpads get really, really bad really, really quick. And finally, we come to price, which is why a lot of you are here. What I want to urge you towards is not to cheap out completely to the bottom of the barrel on this stuff because when we get down to these really, really low prices, you get some devices that are just not well put together. However, I want to tell you the ones that are the lowest price. And so the Samsung Chromebook 3 is the most recent Chromebook you can get a hold of at its probably the lowest price. I've seen it for 160 bucks, which is crazy. Um, it does not have a touch screen. It's got a terrible display and the input methods are just so-so. So again, you're going to get what you pay for here, but I wanted to mention it because it's super duper low in price. The C330 from Lenovo that we've mentioned in two other sections sometimes has a price of around 170 bucks. Right now, I think it's going for $220, $230. At most, you're going to pay $300 for it. So keep an eye out. It's going to fluctuate. It's in a really, really nice price point for all that you get from it. And again, I'm going to mention Asus's newer Chromebooks because they're brand new. They've just come out. They have the newest processors in them and they are $269, both of them, for either the 14 or 15 inch. Now, before we kind of wrap all this up and I give you some recommendations to move out of this video with, I do want to mention refurbished devices. Now, we can't talk about those as constants because they're not always available. They're not brand new. They're not going to always be there. But if you can stumble across them, right now there's a bunch of them, especially at Best Buy and Amazon. You can get refurbished devices and they knock quite a bit off the price. There are a couple that I want to mention, again, sub $300 that you can find right now pretty easily refurbished. That's the Acer Chromebook 15. It's the one we reviewed earlier in the year. Uh, it's all aluminum, full HD display. It's got a little bit better processor than some of these others we've talked about. 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, backlit keyboard touchscreen. It's got a lot of good stuff and it can be had for about 280, 290 uh, right now if you find a refurb. And then the Acer Chromebook 14, which is a device that was made about a year and a half, two years ago. Older processor, really great build quality, no touchscreen. So it's going to be a little bit slower, but it's just a really, really good looking device if that's kind of what you're into. And again, you can get it for quite a bit under $300. So if you've made it to this point in the video, I'm going to freely assume that the earlier sections did not sell you on one device over the other. So let me help you out. You're probably at this point saying, I have 300 bucks and I need to buy a Chromebook. Which one should I get? There are two devices that kind of stand up above all the rest of the devices we've talked about when we're talking about price and what you get for that money. And they're both made by Lenovo, the 500e and the C330. It's just they offer two different things. The C330 is still your best bet if you're just looking to try to save some money and get the best Chromebook for your dollar. It doesn't have a stylus though, and the 500e from Lenovo does have a stylus and all the great things that the C330 has, plus it's rugged. So you kind of get everything we could possibly hope for in a cheap Chromebook in the 500e and in the 330, a couple things less. And so that decision is just kind of up to you. If it were me and I were gonna spend less than 300 bucks and get a Chromebook for my child, I would get the C330 because I don't know that stylus input and ruggedness is that big of a deal. But everyone's going to be different. And some people are thinking, hey, a stylus is the most important thing I could have. And being rugged is the most important thing I can have. Then absolutely go with the 500e. Both of them are under $300. And both of them are great Chromebooks that are going to give you a good overall experience at this price point. But that's it for this one. Uh, hopefully we've helped you make a purchasing decision. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button below. And until next time, we'll see you.